Welcome to vlog number one. The title of this vlog is On Napoleon. So the source that I decided to use is a Smithsonian article titled A Journey to St. Helena, Home of Napoleon's Last Days. So this article sort of gives a summary of his life on St. Helena. This was the island that he was banished to after he returned to uh, Europe. The original island that he was banished to was Corsica. Uh, however, he fled from that after staying there for 300 days. He then returned to Europe and led his second grand campaign, which was the Waterloo campaign, which of course ended tragically for him and many others. And so what this article does is it sort of goes through his life and his aspect. It goes over sort of the scenery of the island, what it looks like, what he did there. Uh, and so first what I want to do is I want to give some context on this because the history of Napoleon all through his entire life is actually really interesting, really fascinates me. So he started off as a young artillery officer. This was a little bit after and also before the French Revolution. After the French Revolution, he became a commander of an artillery regiment. Uh, he then uh, progressed through until he became a general. Uh, that is when he started his Egyptian campaign. He invaded Egypt in the early, or around late 1700s. So around that time, uh, he was leading his Egyptian campaign and that campaign was known as one of his biggest failures. Uh, it started off good, but he just couldn't maintain the supply. Uh, he couldn't keep up with his armies. They, they just couldn't beat the Egyptians and the uh, co-British Egyptian force. And so what happened from that is his armies uh, ended up being stagnant for a while and plague started going through the ranks. They were starving, their, their morale was terrible. And so naturally what he did is he abandoned his, his army and fled by himself all the way back to France, leaving his army to die. And so after that, it was sort of a stain on his record, but he was still able to overcome and rise, and that is uh, beginning his ascendancy to the role of emperor of the new empire of France. And so after he achieved uh, that role, he went on through and just basically just kicked the hell out of everybody in Europe. Now, contrary to popular belief, he did not start most of these wars. Most of them were actually started by the coalitions, which included England, Prussia, Russia, and a whole bunch of other countries because they did not like that he was promoting uh, enlightenment ideals such as freedom for everybody, equality, law. They didn't like that because they were all monarchies and he sort of symbolized the French Republic despite him being an emperor. So they led these grand campaigns against him which eventually led to his defeat and exile from France. But then once he returned, he again uh, started his conquest. He recaptured the entirety of France, and then he pushed through all of Germany, took out Austria, and then eventually led to the Waterloo Campaign. Now, this, this is where he gets banished to St. Helena after his defeat over there. Uh, he initially wanted to escape to uh, the Americas, and he was hoping that he could seek asylum there but that was an option later on and he uh, considered it better to surrender to the British instead of the Prussians because the Prussians would have most likely executed him if they had gotten him. So after surrendering to the British, he thought that he would get his own sort of sanctuary claim of land in England. He can live out his life on a farm like every man wants to do. But they ended up getting him on the ship, promising that. And then they shipped him off to St. Helena, a small remote rocky island in the middle of the ocean with like no land around for 2000 miles. So there he stayed for the rest of his life. He died there. Uh, and initially, as said in the article, he enjoyed his life there. Uh, he would talk to the people there. He would, he would always have visitors. He'd be talking with the uh, British officers. He'd ride his horse around the island. 
you know, he'd write his memoirs. He, he was having, you know, quite a bit of fun. But then uh, the, they had a change of commanders over there for the British. And the new commander, which I believe his name was... I'll, I'll pull it up later. But uh, as the article says, the commander was very harsh and very different from the one that he had. He was a lot more restricting. He, he would only let certain visitors visit Napoleon. Uh, he wouldn't let him go on his horse unless he was accompanied by an officer, which eventually led to him not riding his horse, not going out, not enjoying his sort of freedom that he had on his one sole place. Because he really wanted to make that place like home. He wanted to reminisce of his time in France. And so without that, his health started to deteriorate. There is a conspiracy theory out there that they are poisoning him. Uh, take it as, as you want it. There's no confirmed reason for his death. Uh, all we know is that he slowly died on the island after that, uh, eventually passing. And so with the article, uh, it goes over the whole history of that, his emotions, sort of, uh, how he fell over on the island. Uh, the people that wrote the article, that would be, according to this, that is Erica, um, I'm gonna try to pronounce this, Munkwitz, and uh, James L. Swanson. So uh, these people went to the island. It's a common tourist attraction to go and see the home of Napoleon. And, uh, what? S? What does S mean? Just say it. Smithsonian. Smithsonian, that's right. <laughs> Thank you, cameraman. So uh, the source that I'm using is smithsonian.com. As you can see, I'll go ahead and put a link right here in the corner of the screen. Uh, it will also be down in the description. Also, just a quick little thing, make sure to smash that like button, hit subscribe, and check out my Twitch hey, account, hyperlinks. Twitch TV forward slash Rigby250. And also for some hyperlinks on here, some other things that you should really look up on uh, on this website is, if I can get down to it, uh, there's a book called Napoleon, A Life right here that you can buy, which goes over the entire life history of Napoleon. Uh, there are also a whole bunch of other articles scattered throughout here, just going through the history of uh, himself. There are some articles on uh, the Notre Dame, which recently burned down. And uh, these are actually really good articles because uh, you can get a lot of information if you're not the historian yourself. You can go and uh, learn a lot about Napoleon's life, which I find really interesting. Hence my wanting to do this video on Napoleon. So let's go ahead and continue. But... Uh, with the article, the reporters here, they, they went to Napoleon's house on uh, St. Helena, which was known as Longwood. Uh, they went there, and they actually had a dinner over there with the people tending to the house, because it is a preserved site, uh, which is actually very rare. They got to see all the uh, artifacts that are left behind there, a lot of things that Napoleon himself used. Uh, there is Napoleon's desk that he used through all those years. They can see all of his memoirs, all the... All, all the items in his house because that was his house that is where the emperor of, of france lived for however many years until he died there and so th they also go on to talk about his gravesite. uh he was buried there then his ashes were eventually transported back to paris where he now lies and so it is really just a, a great article that explains the history of napoleon one of my favorite stories and i would definitely recommend checking it out it is pretty well written so I, overall, I'd give it a, uh, I'd give it a seven out of ten. It's. What are you doing? What does this mean? Just say, it, say. It. This is a vlog. You can put your input in. We're good. We're not good yet. I still gotta give it my rating. I give it a seven out of ten. Good. There, there were some opinions on in there. There were some also things that were not quite factual. They bagged on him for his height. And yeah, they said he was short because. Uh, he like poked holes through his, bl through his blinds to look through them because he didn't want to be seen by the outside world and they sort of made fun of him for his height because the eye holes were so short. Uh, he wasn't that short, he was actually 5'7", so uh, that was average male height for that time. A lot of people were very short back then, so I don't get why people always do that. That's just British propaganda. Uh, besides that, it was decently well researched, uh, well written, that's for sure. Lots of good uh, word choices in there. Lots of good vocabulary. The pictures were fantastic. Very beautiful. And on a, I, I would give it a look on yourself if you're interested in either uh, 19th century history, uh, Napoleonic War history, 
or you just want to get to know the personal life of the Emperor of France. So thank you for joining me here on my first nature walk for my vlogs. Uh, make sure to come back. There will be plenty more to come. And thank you for watching. See you later.